everybody, Dirt Dad here. Um, yeah, I'm in violation of uh, some sort of video um, authoring law, right? You can't put your shadow in a video. I want my shadow in this video because I'm going to use it to show you some stuff. The topic is how to handle a tall bike. Uh, now, why would you want to know how to handle a tall bike? Maybe you're looking at buying a tall bike. Maybe you wanted a dirt bike and you go, oh, uh, those are great, but they're all too tall. Uh, maybe you're just a perp, and you know last time you went to steal bikes, uh, they were all tall bikes, and because you couldn't ride them, you, know, you, you figured you'd get to the first intersection, drop the bike and run, and the angry mob would come and beat the crap out of you, because they could figure out you probably stole it. So maybe you know you want to learn to ride it for that reason. Whatever the case, how I'm going to show you some some of the tips I've learned from experienced riders. I've only had this bike for a year, um, gotten pretty comfortable with it. I'm only five eight. I'm 5'8", got a 30, 32 inch inseam. I think it's all pretty normal proportions. A lot of people look at bikes like this and figure, oh, you gotta be six feet to ride a bike like that. Plus, that's a bike for a tall guy. Not so, not so. Um, so, uh, let me start off by the first thing you gotta know how to do is get on the bike. It, like, that's where we start. I'm gonna start by also by lowering the camera here a bit. There we go. Now we're in looking down mode, which is what we're doing a lot right now. The way, uh, let me start by showing you how people normally get on a bike. It's a pretty easy thing, but, and how it doesn't work with a tall bike. Mostly you throw your leg over the back, right? Grab the bar, throw your leg over the back of the bike, and, oh. <clears throat> I've never gotten on the bike this way. I'm not sure I'll be able to for this video. I'm, uh, you know, I probably burn my pants off on the, big like, pipe. <clears throat> ah, I don't think I can do that. And most people don't on a tall bike. Uh, what they'll usually do is throw their feet right over the seat. So I'm going to try that, which is also something I never do. So maybe with practice, you can get better at it. <laughs> you know, throw your foot over like that. It kind of have to walk it over and get on the bike. And to get off, you have to kind of like either pick your leg up or scrape your shoe all over the top of your seat and make a big mess. I don't do that. Yeah, that does. Look at that. My seat's a mess. Why? Who would do that? <clears throat> here's, how, here's how I get on my bike. All right. I'm on the left side of the bike. Left foot, left foot peg, grab the bars, watch my shadow here. I'm gonna throw my leg over the back of the bike like that. <clears throat> this is also, as a side note, a nice way to get on a touring bike that's laden with big bags and stacked up with big bags. <clears throat> a variation of that is, to, if you can't get your big leg back that far because of the bags, a variation is to do it with a bent leg. Get up on the bike, put the knee on the saddle, and come around like this to get around all your stuff. When you're done, you're standing on the bike. That's why I'm doing, standing on the pegs, which is what you're going to do a lot, riding a bike like this on the dirt anyway. So it's easy to do. All right, now that we're sitting on the bike, the next thing you're going to need to do is hold the bike up, how to balance it while you're sitting on it. Um, so let's take a, first I'm going to take a look at, let you have a look at how this bike fits me. Here I am trying to put both feet on the ground, okay? This bike is, this toe, this foot is on a toe, this foot is on a toe. That's how I fit this bike. Uh, and my advice is, if you fit, if you uh, a bike fits you like this, don't try to put two feet down. It does not work. Why? Because well, if I'm slightly off balance, that's all I got for for traction on its foot. This foot can slip that easy. I've got nothing holding my holding me up. The way to hold yourself up on a bike like this is to let the bike bike lean off to one side. I'm going to lean it to the left the point where I can I can get the ball of my foot on the ground meaning I can bend the toes of the toe joint that's the ball of my foot that means this foot comes off the ground I think the mistake a lot of people think is that's that's just a useless foot now well it's not you put your foot on the foot peg and now I can balance my bike using both feet just one of them happens to be using the using the foot peg to do it let me take my uh, hands off the bars now I'm going to manipulate the bike using just my feet, my the toe, the ball of my foot, and my foot on the foot peg. And I have a lot of control. All the movement I'm doing here is just using foot on the ground, foot on the foot peg. And I'm not moving the camera, I'm not moving my helmet. That would look like this. Okay, so this is just me balancing the bike. This is probably a good little exercise. I found that this is actually a good way to hold up any kind of a bike, even bikes where I can flat foot both sides. This gives you more control over the bike. 
uh, than having two feet on the ground and using your butt to do the same thing. So if I, so I always put a foot on the ground, a foot on a foot peg when I'm standing at a bike at an intersection. One thing that helps me as I handle a tall bike like this is thinking about the leg that's on the ground. I have to think of this leg as operating like a kickstand. Um, number one, the bike leans slightly towards it when I'm when I have the when I have the uh, foot on the ground, and it doesn't give. And that's about all it can do is for serve as a kickstand. I can't be doing all the things, maybe pushing the bike around. Um, although I'll get into that later. In the same way that you do with a flat foot. And the next thing you need to know how to do after you are on the bike and balancing it is uh, how do you stop? Stopping a bike like this requires uses a technique called pick a side. And pick a side sounds easy enough, kind of intuitive, right? <clears throat> what it means is before you get to the stop, you've got to decide, because you've got to lean the bike one way or the other and put only one foot down, you have to decide at some point before the stop what side that's going to be so that you can shift your weight to that side and get your leg out on that side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. I'm going to stop. Well, the side I'm going to pick is the left side. So out goes the foot, and I lean the bike over and I stop. Now there's more going on to it than that. People go, well, just pick a side. A couple of things to note. <clears throat> Number one, you've got to be precise about your stopping technique and how and where you put your foot down. Uh, if, you, if you're used to using two feet and doing a little paddle at, to stop, you're not going to be able to do that on a tall bike. So you've got to f f have that foot on the side that you pick, hit the ground within what I call one stride of where you're ultimately going to stop. Get the foot down and stop. As you get good, what you'll find is you can put your foot down exactly at the point where you're going to stop. Anyway, there's no need to stride. Boom, there you stopped. Now that we understand pick a side, another thing to know about tall bikes is how they react under braking. Tall bikes are tall because they have long travel. And long travel suspensions uh, cause the exaggerates certain behavior about bikes that all bikes have. Uh, but they, they rear their ugly head more on a long suspension bike. And these are things you need to master anyway when handling a long travel bike, uh, a tall bike. Number one is they react very differently to the front and the rear brakes. Front brake, I'm going to, I'm going to apply the front brake, I'm going to keep my head level. And I don't know if that comes across in the video very well. I hope it does. Uh, I'm getting what's I'm getting brake dive, the, or no, uh, the front of the bike is diving down a lot when I apply front brakes only, really hard. Um, if I apply the rear brake only, the whole bike squats, the front and the back of the bike, <laughs> and sometimes my ABS brake kicks in. So this is important to know because when you're stopping the bike. <clears throat> Uh, it's nice to apply the rear brake, or the front and the rear, not the front only. If you try to stop a bike applying the front brake only, you're going to have to deal with all that nose dive, or that brake dive, uh, as you're coming to a stop. And then when you do come to a stop and release the brakes, the front of the bike is going to pop up. <clears throat> None of which is that terrible, really. But as a beginner getting used to it, if you can eliminate that behavior of the bike while you're stopping, that's good. <clears throat> the reason I mention that is because you can only use the rear brake when you're putting the left foot down. If you're putting the right foot down, obviously, you don't have access to the rear brake anymore. So at first, it's going to be easier to stop with the left foot. When you say pick a side, pick the left side. That's the easiest one to stop with first. Plus, in America, we ride on the right-hand side of the street, and the road is crowned. And as a result, it's a less of a reach for your left leg to hit the pavement then for the right. I'm going to stop here and kind of show you that. I'm on a crown road, I'm off on the side where the crown's going to be pretty exaggerated and here's my left foot is down and here's my right foot down. I've got to do, again this may not come across in the video, how much more leaning I've got to do to get that right foot down. Left foot, right foot. But even so you should learn to stop with either foot, either the left or the right foot down, because you never know where your balance is going to be, where obstacles might be, and what side, what foot you might have to use to come down with. I, I favor the left foot, but I force myself to use the right foot once in a while, sometimes when I don't have to, just to keep myself in practice. Because you've also then got to be good at stopping smoothly with the front brake only, 
at least the last little bit of the of the uh, stop has to occur with a front brake only and you have to have all the precision so it's uh, easier to start with the left foot and then move on to the right foot another thing to be aware of when it comes to tall bikes and braking is how they handle sitting on a hill so I'm going to pull over here and I'm going to stop I'm facing downhill and I'm applying the rear brake only which is the uphill brake um, if I'm applying the rear brake only the uphill brake only the bike sits lower if I change instead to grabbing just the front brake, the bike pops up significantly higher. It'll sit higher on its suspension. Rear brake only, it sits down. Front brake only, it pops up. So if you want to keep the bike a little lower if you're stomped on a hill, favor the uphill brake. And I say it that way because it's, it's reversed. It's not front and rear brake, it's uphill and downhill brake. If I were to turn around and be facing uphill, I would want to be holding onto the front brake and not the rear brake in order to help the bike sit lower. This is true on any bike. Um, even on your car. Uh, your car, your only uh, separate control you have of the rear brake is the parking brake, uh, which generally controls the rear only. So you can observe this behavior on your bike or your car. It's going to come through much more on a long travel bike. One final tip I can think of for handling a tall bike is how to maneuver around when you need to paddle it. Say you've got to back into a parking spot or manipulate the bike when you're used to having two feet on the ground and, and, and pushing the bike around. Any bike I've ever ridden has been much easier to push around when it's in neutral um, than it is when it's in gear and you're holding down the clutch. So I've got it neutral now and I want to push the bike around. It's easier to push forward. Pushing back is the, pro is, is the issue and what I do is I get, get way off to the side of the bike I'm even kind of pushing uphill here, and this is the best you can do. So if you're, sometimes you're stuck doing this to get the bike moved around. <coughs> you see I've gotten my, <coughs> I'm sort of hooking around the bike with the leg and getting my foot farther off the side, holding the bike up so that I can push it more. And that's just what you're gonna be stuck, just what you have to deal with when you're not, that, when you're not such a tall guy handling a tall bike. Um, if I were to put this bike in gear instead and try to do the same thing and hold it in the clutch and do the same thing, it's much harder to push around. But I would use the same technique. So hook one leg over, get your step way off, get your foot way off to the side, and push around like that, and just get used to the fact that you're going to make small movements. So those are some of the skills I've learned uh, from more experienced riders. I've applied myself. And as an average height guy, I've gotten comfortable handling a tall bike.